really was a glorious concert. I never heard you play more superbly. I've only one complaint to make. You don't play nearly often enough these days. Don't forget, my good friend, that I have a very long and strenuous career behind me. Over 3,000 recitals and concerts. Even so, you should go on. Think what your playing means to countless people. The glow, the enthusiasm. It must be very gratifying. Naturally, an artist is bound to be gratified by applause. But only when he feels, when he knows that he has played his best. Mm. As always with you. Alas, no. So much depends on the mood of the moment. My own mood, the mood of the audience. It is rarely indeed that the miracle happens. It certainly happened tonight. I'm not thinking of this particular concert. I am thinking beyond of the emotions that music is able to arouse of the lasting effect it may have on some of its listeners. That is what I call the miracle. That's very interesting. Tonight, for instance, you all saw that sweet little child running on to the platform. You saw her parents. You heard me play the first movement of the most popular among Beethoven's sonatas. Yes, I wondered. It isn't generally played as an encore, is it? No, but I played it for two very happy young people. You see, it happened about five years ago. I was then giving recitals in that delightful country of Sweden. The parents of the child well then, such a nice, charming, lovable couple. Eric, what made you do that all of a sudden? Do you mind? Well, what a silly question. Anyway, it's a bit late to ask, isn't it? <laughs> I've wanted to do that for ages, only I... Go on. Oh, how on earth does one say it? Ingrid, I... I suppose you know I adore you. Well, one adores so many things, doesn't one? From motor cars to see them puppies. Heaps of things, but but only one person. Eric, you are in earnest, aren't you? Absolutely. Oh, I say, I know I'm making a mess of this. I I can't seem to express myself somehow, but but is there any chance for me at all? Well, what do you mean exactly? You see, I've known for ages that I was in love with you, and it's hard to believe that you haven't known it too. Well, how could I when you never said a word? You see, this as they said in Grandma's time, it's so sudden. I wish you'd stop making fun of it all. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's so unexpected. You seem so young, and besides, I... I thought the Baroness wouldn't approve. Grandma? Oh, she thinks you're marvelous. Well, that's very nice of her, but... Well, what do you think? Oh, please don't rush me. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be horrid. You couldn't be. You know, Ingrid, I'd, I'd almost made up my mind to, to tell you... To ask you tonight when the clock struck 12. Like Cinderella. <laughs> Dramatic. But why? And tomorrow's your birthday. Oh, I see. Then I'll be old enough to understand what you're talking about. Well, stop joking and listen to me. I, I know I'm no good at expressing myself, but, but I love you. Eric, dear, you must give me time. Honestly, I've never thought about you like that before. I was afraid of that. You thought of me as someone you've known ever since you were in the nursery. Someone for whom you've just had a... A friendly affection. Well, we've always liked being together, haven't we? Of course we have. Look how we like the same things. Life in the country and riding and boating. And music. Music, of course. Oh, Ingrid, if, if you'd only... Well, perhaps next year. Next year? <laughs> yes, silly. Begins on my birthday, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the transcontinental airplane. They seem to be in trouble. Is something wrong? You sure? Oh, good heavens. Quick. They're trying to make a forced landing. Rush back to the house and give warning. I, I may have to take them there. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but I can assure you, please don't apologize. On the contrary, 
We must thank you for saving our lives. Thank you, sir. Paris? No, sir. Sweden. Well, that's impossible. I'm the fuck for When can we start again? Have to get the spare parts first. Can't possibly tell. But I can't possibly wait. This is absurd. Don't you think this is an absolute scramble? I spent a fortune trying to get to Paris in time, and here we are dumped in the middle of the forest. Nobody hurt, I hope. No, no, but the shock, the awful shock. How far is it to the nearest railway station? Oh, there, there are no railways here. No railways? Surely there must be some other way. There's a steamer, but it doesn't call until the day after tomorrow. Oh, you're absolutely right. Why did we ever take some beastly place? Catch me staying two days in this foul wilderness. Pilot! Pilot! Now, what do you suggest we might do? Well, sir, there, there's a place quite near here, and I assure you the owner would be only too pleased to welcome you. Never mind, never mind. We'll talk about that later. Find the iodine and put out the brandy. And get plenty of blankets. Iodine, lint, bandages, brandy. Quick, and don't lose your head. Nils, Nils, hot water. Have it handy. We may not be able to get them upstairs. Yes, my lady. Ah, blankets. You'll find plenty more on the cupboard. Run along. Anna, Anna, you put out that brandy? Yes, my lady. Please, yes, my lady. Right. What's that? Well... Mr. Padovsky. Yes, mother. Ingrid! It's Mr. Padovsky. Mr. Padovsky here in this house. It's too wonderful, you of all men. But are you sure you're not hurt? Your hands... Quite safe, Baroness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Think, think what a blessing. May I present... My old friend and fellow traveler, Mr. Bishop. I hope you're not hurt either. No, I'm, I'm still uh, flying. Yeah. Nils, uh, take Mr. Bishop into the library, will you? He'd better lie down. If he's still suffering from shock, he must be kept warm. Uh, lots of blankets and a little brandy. Yes, yes please. Please. thank you. This okay. way, if you please. Sir. Thank you very much, yes. There's uh, lots of brandy and a uh, little blanket. Yes, thank you very much. You know, I've always loathed aeroplanes. But since this accident has brought you here, what can we do for you? Is there anything you would like? Wine? Coffee? No, thank you. Really. I can't begin to tell you what this means for us. My dear Baroness, I am afraid this unexpected invasion of your beautiful castle must be most inconvenient. Not at all. An honor. And to us, a real, real pleasure. But that is too kind. You and your music are being connected in a wonderful way with the fates of those dearest to me. My little granddaughter, my daughter's daughter. Indeed? Oh, you must forgive this excitement. Such a strange coincidence. Tell me, will there be enough room for all of us in this house of yours? Oh, I imagine so. No pigs? Pigs? No, no pigs. Just an old lady and her granddaughter. In the middle of the woods, hmm? Oh, exactly. Sounds like a fairy story. Well, it is a fairy story. And I suppose the prince comes along and marries the girl. Well, not exactly a prince. Oh, but it must be a prince if it's a real fairy story. It always is. Yes. Very interesting. Very. I remember perfectly the opening of that new concert hall. It was a long time ago, yet you have kept this program. How charming of you. It stands for a great deal in our family. For romance, for happiness, for tragedy. For the life of two people, for the lives of three people. Had it not been for your playing, my daughter would never have met the man she married. And Ingrid, my mother used to tell me the story. Her story. So you see, it was really your playing that brought this about. My playing? My daughter adored music. 
and we had gone to Stockholm, naturally, to hear you. Then we found there was some mistake about the seats. I can still see my poor girl standing with tears in her eyes. But you did get in, after all, oh, didn't yes. you? A young officer standing by saw our difficulty, and he begged us to share his box. It was love at first sight. No, no, no. It wasn't until they'd listened together to your playing the Moonlight Sonata that he told her that he loved her and asked her to marry him. A real-life romance. Yes. But their happiness was too bright for this world. Ingrid's mother and father died quite young. I remember my mother playing the Moonlight Sonata. And whenever I hear it, it means everything that's sacred to me. I understand. How strange that I should come to this house, of all others. But how gratifying to... Look here, have you been pulling my leg? Please do go in, and I'll just find out where everyone is. Uh, I take it you're one of the household here. I happen to be the agent for the Lindenberg estate. Well, why didn't you say so? You didn't ask me. Now, if you'll just wait a moment, I'll go and tell them you're here. May I introduce myself, Mario de la Costa. I'm very glad to see you, Mr. de la Costa. You've had an unpleasant experience, I'm afraid. Not at all. No. Weren't you the least bit frightened? Not for one moment. Actually, I slept through the whole affair. <laughs> what? It was I've been at a party all night. Scarcely time to catch the plane, hence this absurd get-up. I was sleeping like a log. Suddenly, somebody shakes me awake. I look out of the window, and to my astonishment, I find myself in the middle of the forest instead of in Paris. You... You wanted to go to Paris? Where else does one go at this time of the year? Oh, I do envy you. Don't tell me you've never been... No, to... I've never been outside Sweden. Ah, then you've something beautiful to look forward to. Do you know what a clever man once said? Everybody has two hometowns, the one in which he was born and Paris. And now you've got to miss that for another two days. On the contrary, I am in Paris now. Is this all your luggage, sir? Uh, yes, my trunks have gone on ahead. Shall he show you your room? Well, yes, I should like to make myself a little more presentable. <laughs> but of course, dinner's not till half past eight. You'll meet my grandmother then. I shall be enchanted if she welcomes me half as charmingly as her granddaughter. This way, sir, please. Please, to unpack, sir. No, thanks. I, I always do that myself. In my case, for instance, I have a most extraordinary mixture. On my mother's side, Portuguese, and my father's Dalmatian. Funny. I always think of Dalmatians as those black and white spotted dogs that used to run under dog carts. Yes, but that's not all. I've got Hungarian blood in my veins, too. Dear me, what a remarkable chemical analysis. Yes, and what's more, some of my ancestors were Spanish, so that I'm of Castilian blood also. Well, we should be here all night if he's going through it drop by drop. And uh, here is the result. League of Nations. <laughs> Ah, yes, but I know what I want. I suppose you've traveled all over the world, more or less. And always in a dress suit. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the merest chance. Naturally, I don't always travel in dress clothes. What do you take me for? Actually, I'd just come from the wedding with an old friend of mine, Count Vestemark Silvis Sun, as a matter of fact. A marvelous dinner, and then a cabaret show with first-class entertainment. What a party. Everybody in the world was there. The food and champagne was superb. But the most wonderful thing of all was the old brandy, poured out like water. The whole fair must have cost a fortune. 
That must have been pain and grief, the old Count. He doesn't like spending his money. <laughs> He's not the only one. <laughs> How absolutely right you are, Baroness. Do you know that the artists engaged were kept there till four in the morning, and then he tried to cut their fees? Oh, dreadful, dreadful. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Matter of fact, we had quite a scene about it. It almost made them miss my plane. You'd have done better now if you had missed it and gone by train. I couldn't possibly do better than I'm doing at present. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What a terrible young man that is, huh? He means well, but terrible, terrible. Look what you're doing. Gazing at that young clown at your age. No, 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 I show you it's perfectly true. There's something mysterious, magnetic, almost magic about me. Wherever I go, there's always an engagement or a wedding. You must be very popular. Oh, yes, indeed. I'm sure he must be. You seem to have made a great impression on Margaret. Margaret. But she's really very sweet. I think we'll have coffee in the music room. It's growing rather chilly here. Perhaps you'd like a game of bridge, Mr. Pellerskin. Nothing better. That is, if you... I didn't die. <laughs> we have so few good players nowadays. Well, I can assure you, you'll find Mr. Pellerskin here. How long do you expect to be in Paris? Well, that depends. And after Paris? Venice for the season, the leader. Later Biarritz, early in the winter, of course, Egypt. Christmas in St. Moritz, or possibly Kitzbühel. Oh, how lovely. I'd adore to travel. It sounds so exciting. So perfect. Exciting in a way it certainly is, but that's what being perfect too. Life's not ever quite that, is it, until... Until? Until there's someone to share it. Oh. The right someone. The one that really understands. Mr. De La Costa! Dear Mr. De La Costa. I'm sure you'll play a first-class game of bridge. I'm the most dangerous opponent. I'm afraid I have the most incredible luck. Hmm. I happen to be pretty lucky myself. Uh, you seem I'm not right. <laughs> yes. Very well. Will you please shuffle? Yes. Ingrid, in less than half an hour you'll be 18. Then you'll... What did you say? Cast iron hand. Baroness, my luck makes it quite impossible for me to play. It's a wonderful trick. Shall we play together, Mr. Battlefield? Pleasure. Will you do try and make that radio work, Eric? I never can. Oh, dear, Mr. De La Costa, do show us some more of your wonderful tricks. But I assure you, that's just my luck. Oh, but can't you make your luck work again? I wish I could. Oh, please do. All right. But I only know one trick. That's very difficult. Needs a great deal of concentration. It only comes off once in every thousand years. <laughs> I haven't heard so much young laughter here for a long, long time. Sounds like our children, Baroness. Children? Thirty. <laughs> A holiday house which the Baroness was generous enough to found for them. And which Dr. Broman is kindly looking after. Very fine. Perhaps if you're here tomorrow, you'd like to drive over and see it. Oh, it would be delightful, Baroness. <clears throat> and uh, are we playing bridge? <laughs> oh, is this a charity committee? <laughs> I double your downs. Oh. I haven't been able to get a word out of you all evening. What's come over you? What nonsense. It isn't nonsense. You paid no attention to anybody except De La Costa. And he's our guest, isn't he? I thought you were one of the family. Do you really mean that, Ingrid? What, Eric? Well, I asked you this morning to marry me. 
Well, you know I haven't had a moment to think. So much has happened since then. Mm-hmm. It's that fellow over there. Oh, don't be absurd. Oh, I know I'm not a clever chap who's traveled all over the world in a dress suit. Please don't talk like that. That isn't like you. No, Eric, don't be angry with me. I couldn't be angry with you. May I? Please. I'm not a very good dancer. I'm sure you are. In a way, I'm a pretty good teacher. You'll see. Splendid. I'll try this step. Perfect. You're wonderfully quick. They were born dancers. They're a wonderfully matched couple. Twelve o'clock. Your birthday. Yes. Really happy to turn to the day, my darling. Thank you, Grandmother. Let me offer my congratulations. I am so glad to be here for the occasion. We're very glad to have you. Very glad. You've always given me such lovely birthdays, ever since I was little. My dear, I hope and believe that this is going to be the happiest of them all. And I echo that hope with all my heart. My very best wishes. And mine too. Thank you. Thank you. Ingrid. I hope you will always be very happy. So you've come. I'd hoped you would. Why? I thought you might want to explain. To explain? Yes, about... about what happened last night. I don't think I'm going to explain. What do you mean? I think you lost your head last night, didn't you? Oh, don't take it so seriously. After all, the life down here isn't very exciting. Is it a crime to enjoy meeting somebody from the outside world? That's all very well, but you're not going to dismiss the whole thing like that. I had hoped after our talk in the morning that, that after your birthday came... Eric, don't. You showed me clearly enough last night that you didn't want to be reminded of things like that. It's all De La Costa's doings, of course. You're jealous, that's all. Of course I am. But apart from that, there's just something about the fellow that I... that I don't altogether trust. That's being very unfair. Besides, you don't understand Mary as I do. He and I are friends. Friends? In one day? Eric, you must realize that I, I don't have to account to you for my likes and dislikes. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to press any claims of my own on you, but I'm not going to stand quietly by and see you taken in when you're not old enough to know what's going on. Well, you thought I was old enough to listen to you yesterday. I understand perfectly. I, I saw how it was last night. Oh, do stop talking about last night. All right, you must make your own decisions. And I intend to.
It's after 11, sir. The Baroness is waiting. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm afraid I overslept. Will you please make my apologies to the Baroness? Very good. Now, darling, what do you say to the kind gentleman? Beautiful flowers. I thank you, my dear child. I thank you very, very much. Oh, you know what children are. We've had such short notice. Of course, I understand it perfectly. I hope you're not too dissatisfied, Baroness. But it's quite perfect. Such happiness, such contentment. Hello, good morning. I was afraid you'd gone with the other. Now I was delayed. I hope you weren't waiting for me. I overslept, and here's my reward. We shall both of us be in disgrace. And what's going to happen to us? Well, we might have to stand in the corner. Not so long as it's the same corner. Oh, but seriously, what are we going to do? Well, let's go through the forest. There's a shortcut and we'll be there in about half an hour. May I really come with you? <laughs> of course. Wait till I've changed. I won't be a moment. And now, if the children may, they will give just a little performance in honor of our dear guest. Hey, Margaret, please. Please. Sit down. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Perhaps somebody here could play the piano. Sir, would you oblige? Of course, if nobody can play, that settles it. If it is not too difficult, perhaps I might. Oh, that'd be too wonderful. I think I can just about manage that.
the first time we ever played dancing. <laughs> We can't sit down for a little while. It's so lovely here. Yeah? No, really, we'll be so late. Do we really want to go? I've got a chance of talking to you at last. Don't disappoint me. Well, supposing I'd gone while you were... I knew you hadn't done that. I watched the others leave. Do you mean to say you didn't oversleep at all? Certainly not. On the contrary. I stayed awake half the night wondering how I could work it so that I could see you alone. And I hit on the idea of oversleeping. Was I very wrong? Well, what do you think? Look, it's going to rain. Well, never mind the rain. Tell me if you're angry with me for trying to get to see you alone. Of course not. But I ought to be. Well, to be what one ought to be is always so down. Mmm, <laughs> isn't it fun? Oh, we'll get soaked. We must get to the holiday house before the rain comes. So far, has been very simple, very uneventful. See, the line breaks and begins again. You're a child no longer. You're going to find yourself. There's a great change coming. I've often wondered if anything interesting would ever happen to me, or whether I'd always lead this quiet, uneventful life. A quiet, uneventful life for you? Never. How do you know? It's all here. But are you sure? Quite, quite sure. Look outside. Now look at yourself. Do you think a girl like you was meant to spend her life buried in the country? Oh, I wish I could foretell the future. But I can. Shall I tell you all I see? Give me your other hand, like that. Now close your eyes. I see you dressed in a beautiful frock, wearing splendid furs and jewels. We're in London, both of us, at a cocktail party. It's a very gay one. There's talk and laughter from any number of well-known people. Most of them are our friends. But we are more interested in ourselves than any of them. What a love there is to see in such a little hand. Oh, look, there's a journey across the sea. We're in Paris, dining in the Bois. You're looking more wonderful than ever in your evening gown. There are lovers everywhere. But the happiest people of all are ourselves. Oh, look, 
a longer journey still to the new world. New York. I see wealth, gardens, wonderful jewels. And you and I still together, laughing, dancing, talking, making love. Ingrid, Ingrid, my sweet Ingrid. Mario. You do understand what your real destiny is, what it must be. Oh, Mario. You do realize it, don't you? You of all people must live, live and love. Madame. There you are. We've been looking for you. You know this after seven? We've no idea. I've got the carriage waiting. I think I'd better go to change. Yes. Ingrid, if you step in here a minute, I'd like to talk to you. Oh, all right. Eric, please realize I won't be treated like a child. Then don't behave like one. I'm only thinking of your own good. You make me simply furious. Stop patronizing me. What's it all about, anyway? Don't you really know? You've made it quite clear that you can do very well without me, Ingrid. But I just don't want to see you make a fool of yourself. What do you mean, make a fool of myself? It's just this. Have you any idea who this De La Costa is? Where he's from or anything about him? I don't want to know except what he chooses to tell me. I happen to be in love with him and, and you want to spoil everything. Now look here, young lady. If you don't come to your senses, do you know what I'm going to do with you? Go right out of my life, I hope. Not at all, young lady. I'm just going to put you across my knee and spank you. I hate you! You're just a bully! My dear, me you make so much noise. I'm sorry, Grandma. I lost my temper. But you must put Eric in his place. He's intolerable. Why, what has he done? He's been trying to order me about and, and interfere in my affairs. Well, my dear, Eric was putting in his face. I would suggest you did it yourself. But I don't think you realize how badly he's behaving. He's rude even to your own guest. Dear me, you don't mean to tell me that Eric has been insulting to Mr. Madrevsky? No. Mr. De La Costa. You don't say so. Has he hurt him very badly? Oh, Grandma. You never take me seriously. I'm in earnest. I don't want to see Eric again as long as I live. In that case, my dear, perhaps it'd be just as well if you didn't sit next to him at dinner this evening. Have you told Miss Hanson that you happen to be the great Mario, the magician, and a married man to the bargain? So you've been concerning yourself with my private affairs, prying into my belongings, in fact. Cut that out. You've been deceiving an inexperienced girl and making love to her. What an old-fashioned outlook. Old-fashioned and artist going to stop. And who's going to stop it? I am. Ingrid may have something to say to that. You speak her name once more and I'll thrash the life out of you. You lay one finger on me and I'll raise murder. I swear I will. You coward. You know perfectly well I can't risk a scene in this house. I can't find Ingrid myself before you can tell any lies about me. Come back here, you. You speak one word to her and I'll... Oh, I see how the land lies. You're in love with Ingrid yourself and you're crazy with jealousy. Oh! Listen to me. You're going out of this house tomorrow first thing and I'm going to take you to the steamer myself. But till then, don't you dare to show your face outside of this room and understand me. You're not coming downstairs for dinner this evening. You're going to have a chill and stay up here. You've played a low-down trick on me. But you're not going to... Just because I've held my tongue so far, that doesn't mean I'm going on holding it. I've got you taped and you know it.
Mr. Paderewski, will you honor the birthday child by sitting next to her at dinner? A disappointment for our two young men, but an honor for me. They don't deserve any consideration. They're both late. Ah, oh, here's one of them. Baroness, Mr. De La Costa begs to be excused. He, he's caught a little chill. A little chill. How characteristic of the present generation. In my young days, one either went into a consumption decently or one kept well. <laughs> With none of these half and half measures. Mr. Bishop? Baroness. Will you take me into dinner? Honor. Oh, no. No, I don't agree with you at all. Something distresses you. Oh, no, no, it's nothing. I must apologize, but may I say, better late than never. On the contrary, in some cases. I was told that you were ill. Oh, it's of no consequence. It's over now. It's really not worth thought. I accept your apology. Won't you sit down? It would have broken my heart to deny myself the pleasure of such enchanting company. What a hero. seems to have done a great deal of damage. Will you excuse me? I must speak to Eric about this at once. Only, dear, we'll look after everyone. Uh, excuse me. You'll forgive me, Mr. Barrowski. Our thunderstorms here are rather noticed. Very minor Why on earth should Niels trouble you about the damage done by the storm? Eric, don't underrate my intelligence. I've often wondered whether you did, but now I'm sure of it. Now, tonight, this de la Costa person has a chill. Then it comes down disgracefully late for dinner, with unconvincing excuses and <laughs> miraculously cured. Then you and he sit glaring at one another like two tigers regardant, or whatever the animals are on the family crest. Kindly tell me at once what all this means. At once, and truthfully. Did you say you were ill? Didn't, didn't you want to come to my birthday dinner? More than anything in the world. It was well knocked into me that I wasn't wanted there. Eric? Oh, I see. You should have told me the fellow was in love with you. Has Eric been interfering? I won't stand that, not for one moment. And I'm going to tell him I won't. Darling, please. Don't make a scene. I trust you implicitly. I don't mind what happens, so long as you aren't in love with him. But you know I'm not. Then let's forget him. He's simply insane with jealousy. But he has no right to be jealous. What does anything else matter so long as you don't let him come between us? Oh, I can't do that, I promise you. I'm not a child any longer, and Eric must realize that. I'm independent no more. Why, I even have my own money. Money? With Ingrid, my sweet. Will you be strong enough to hold out while I'm away? Remember, there's your grandmother as well. Grandma? Well, she's terribly fond of him, isn't she? He might tell her... Well, anything. You know what jealousy is. And she'd believe him. Nothing that she or Eric or anyone else could say or do would make any difference. I would never give you up. You mean that, my darling? You come away with me tomorrow. We'll reach Paris in a few hours and we'll be married at once. You... you mean run away? You see, you really don't care enough. But I do. I do. I will go away with you. How dear you are, Ingrid. 
My darling child, you really must not neglect our guests like this. But, but, Grandma, I... Run indoors, my darling. I'd like a little talk with Mr. De La Costa myself. Oh, very well. My dear Baroness, I, I simply can't bear the thought of leaving here. I shall have nothing left but the delightful remembrance of it all. Indeed. That seems hardly adequate. Come into the library with me, young man. Young man, there's a tradition in our house never to let a passing guest forget us. How could I? I can't begin to tell you how I feel about leaving here. Neither can I. That is just may I be quite frank. By all means, if possible. Only a woman of your world could be so understanding. It gives me courage to make a confession. Baroness, I want to marry your granddaughter. That doesn't surprise me. Ingrid's very sweet. But what makes you think that she's in love with you? I assure you I have every reason to believe that we're very much in love with each other. In that case, there's no obstacle to your marriage. Except for this. I know who showed you that. The act of a jealous cat. But there's one thing it doesn't happen to know. That is that she and I have definitely agreed to divorce. You think that all is the case? Forgive me, but... It has probably never occurred to you that a young girl like my granddaughter, an heiress, is constantly being beset by the attentions of men who, in our world, we call fortune hunters. Such as Eric Molanda, for instance. Ah, no, make no mistake about that. Eric's chief interest lies in his work. At this moment, for instance, he's probably carrying out my instructions. What instructions? To order a carriage to take you away. He has seen to it that your bag is already packed. If necessary, he will put you outside the door. But I'm sure that won't be necessary. You're far too clever not to know when you've lost the game. How beautifully efficient. Efficiency is one of the things on which we pride ourselves. And since you belong to a profession which depends on quickness and cleverness, I'm quite sure that you'll appreciate efficiency in others. Am I to be allowed to state my case? Ah, more than that. The astonishing performance you've given here deserves something. The best performance in your life, I'm sure. You told us that at the wedding the other day, Count Westermark had treated his uh, entertainers ungenerously, yourself included. Outrageously. Well, we must try and remedy that mistake. I shouldn't like you to leave our beloved Sweden with any bitterness in your heart. What shall we say? Miss Pelerowski, I want you to be the first to hear of my happiness. You remember my mother's story and how it was connected with your playing. I think your presence here in our lives again has worked a miracle. A miracle, perhaps but not worked by me. The eternal miracle of youth. I'd feel so absolutely certain if only... But I oughtn't to ask you. I see, I see. Later on, maybe, I will try to make the Moonlight Sonata speak to you. Would you? Stop at nothing. Ingrid, you've no right to speak to Eric like that. No right? When a man slanders another man behind his back, 
From sheer jealousy? Ingrid, is that what you really think? It's what I know. You have driven him out of the house. Can you deny it? Can you deny you've been jealous and mean and, and cowardly? Ingrid, you don't know what you're talking about. You think you're in love with this man, but you're only in love with an imaginary world he conjures up for you. What do you really know about him? But I love him. I belong to him. Nobody's going to stop me. I'm not a child, whatever you may think. I've got a right to live my own life. That's why I'm going to him. Please don't let us break up the party. It's been a wonderful evening. Thank you a thousand times. Must you go? I'm afraid I must. My main responsibilities, you know, towards that large family of ours. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you for everything. It's been a marvelous evening. Ah, I'm so glad you think so. <clears throat> Eric, dear, will you see them off? Certainly, Baron. Yeah. child, you don't know what you've been saying. You're far too inexperienced to realize the frightful mistake you're making. It's not true. I know exactly what I'm doing. Indeed, you do not. To begin with, you're treating Eric most unjustly. He's done his utmost to ruin my happiness. I love Mario and I'm not ashamed of it. Eric has done his utmost to spare you. So have I. Please, Grandpa. Ingrid. Eric wanted to save you from this profound humiliation and disappointment. But now you force me to tell you the truth. This Della Costa person is nothing but an adventurer, my child. See for yourself. Do you realize the kind of man he is? I won't believe anything against him. Then I can only tell you that if you persist in going away with this man, you will wreck your whole life. I love him and I'm going away with him. Very well, my dear. You must go your own way. I shan't stop you by force. Remember that the doors of this house are never closed. Not even at night. I had to tell her. But why? She's got to grow up like the rest of us. She's a little fool. Where's my bag? Oh. Come. We must get back to our guests. Mr. Babrowski, I do hope you'll forgive me. I'm afraid I've been a very bad hostess. I know you have been very anxious, but I hope all is well now. I'm afraid not. I just received this message. The airplane is ready. We can start almost at once. Oh, no. You, you mustn't go. You can't leave us. 
We want you now more than ever. Ingrid? Ingrid. Thank you. 